So, Smash Bros Ultimate is the game where everyone is here. But what about when that's not always the case? Anyone who's followed the Nintendo Direct and E3 trailers for this game knows well and fair that it was heavily marketed around the fact that returning and newcomer characters would be equating to a 70 character roster for Smash Bros Ultimate. And when I say marketed wide, I mean marketed wide. It was a huge selling point for this game, fittingly given it the ultimate title. But as many people found out on December 7th playing, that's not always the case. Or rather, it doesn't start that way. You see, you start out with only the starting roster of 8 characters, and then you have to build up one by one from there. Granted, the game gives you multiple ways to do this, with the World of Light Story Mode and Classic Mode giving you more content for ways to do it, and as always, there's the typical versus match setup for it. But Ultimate made some tweaks to the formula, which has made a pretty polarizing argument in the Smash Bros. community. So hey everyone, I've skipped the tutorial, and let's talk about both sides of the argument and see if we can't find a middle ground compromise in the center. So starting off, let's see why people are actually for this unlocking system. Well, for a lot of reasons, it comes down to being an incentive to keep on playing. This method allows players to try different characters as they go along, as new ones are added onto their roster that they might not have tried in the past. This might sound familiar to Mario Maker's time limit system, where your toolbox actually expands the more that you play, but you only start off with the basics and fundamentals. And to an extent, Smash Bros Ultimate kinda does this. Mario and Kirby are some of the best characters in the game to learn the basic fundamentals of tech and combos, so those are pretty good to start off with for newcomers. On top of this, there's the obvious thrill and surprise of discovering new characters as you go along the more that you play. And since there's an element of randomness, especially if you don't study the patterns online in a wiki beforehand, then you'll be fairly shocked at who's to come. And in fairness, the games know this too. Let's take a look at the challenger approaching system, which has evolved from just a simple blue screen to now actually showing silhouettes and playing a siren sound when you encounter the characters. The other modes, such as World of Light and Classic Mode, actually give you a bit more choice and agency in which path you want to go down for advancing characters. And it gives you a lot of content to do this. In my personal experience, it took me over 20 hours to unlock all the characters in World of Light, which definitely is enough content. And when I've talked to people who share these beliefs, they always bring up the exploit, which is to say that you can actually quit and restart the game after a versus match unlocking a character, which then resets the timer and it's easier for you to unlock more of them in a batch. But if the reasons why people love this mode comes down to the thrill of unlocking and the incentive to actually play through more of the game's content, then on the other side, the people who don't like this feel like it's tedious and unnecessary for the game. For one, if your main character is someone like King K. Rool or Ridley, you're not going to be playing that main for a while. For example, let's say I go over to a friend's house and he just got the new Smash Bros. Great, let's play it. And let's say, per chance, that my main is Palutena, and I've been maining her since Smash 4. Well, if he's only unlocked a few characters, then there's a strong likelihood that he doesn't have the character that I'm used to playing, and the one that I would have the most joy in playing, because in most cases, Palutena is the last character you'll unlock. Moreover, these character approaching matches can actually be seen as difficult and tedious. Because if I'm farming a main for so long then I finally get to that match and lose because the difficulty increases over time, then I'm out of that character for a while. I mean, this was such a problem that they actually nerfed it in a recent patch, showing that players actually did struggle with this quite a bit. But on top of that, there's just so many characters that it takes to unlock, with around 60 that it actually takes so much time to just do the single 1v1 matches. And it should come as no secret to anyone who's been playing this game quite a bit, that there's been a heavy push from Nintendo to make it competitively viable. And let's say I just picked up the game and I'm raring to go to start practicing my mains combos. Well, you need to put in the hours to actually get there, which can take a lot of time and might feel tedious. And if you're not a fan of how the core challenger approaching system works, then the exploit doesn't fix it. It actually proves more of its flaws. Because after all, if you have a system where the main recommendation to fix it is just, oh yeah, cheat it, then maybe it's not that well designed in the first place. How did we get here? I mean, at least from my recollection, I can't remember any of the previous Smash Bros games evoking this same form of polarizing argument about the challenger approaching system. So what happened? Well, to answer that, I think we actually should look at the challenger approaching progression over the course of the series. So here's a brief history of how the challenger approaching system has evolved. Smash Bros 64 handled it in a different way. In fact, most of the characters were just unlocked by doing single-player objectives in the main story. So, for example, beating the single-player mode in less than 20 minutes to unlock Captain Falcon. And when it came to the GameCube and Melee, it was handled in a slightly different way. You still have the same specific objectives that you could do in the Classic and Adventure mode to unlock these characters. But it also added in the feature where you could do a certain amount of versus matches to unlock the characters. With the cap here being at 1000 for Game & Watch. Popping over to the Wii, we had Brawl, with the Subspace Emissary mode that's kind of indicative of World of Light. And to its credit, you could unlock every single character in that mode if need be. But if you wanted to, you could just do the regular versus match spamming to get your characters, with Wolf being the cutoff at 450. 
And then we came to Smash 4 for the Wii U, and what changed here was that most of the roster was already unlocked, and it wasn't that tough to get the new ones because it was only 100 matches to get Duck Hunt, the last one. So for most of the series history, we had this trend of the character roster increasing while the needs to actually do it through versus matches decreasing exponentially. But Ultimate in the end removes all of this through the inclusion of the time limit system. Now there's a cooldown between how much time has to pass between when you first play a newcomer to when you have to fight the next one. After 10 minutes have passed, then you can actually see a new challenger approaching fight after you just did your previous one. And as mentioned earlier, that can be exploded through the reload technique. And also, you can do World of Light or Classic mode, but those take hours. And even the versus match approach here takes a time limit now. So 10 and a half hours is what it's going to take you roughly if you don't exploit it for Palutena. And since your starting roster here is so small and you go one by one, to players who love to unlock, this is plenty of content that keeps them happy. But if you don't like it, then it just comes across as tedious and unnecessary, which can be a pain and a detriment to the game. So with that in mind, how would I fix it? Well, to look for a compromise, we gotta look back at 2017's ARMS, Nintendo's latest attempt at a fighting game IP. For those of you who haven't played this game, here's how the unlock system works. Basically, each character starts off with their own individual set of arms, but if you want to get the rest of the arms for the character, you're going to have to unlock them by process. And these unlockable arms open up new strategies that are crucial for single player and online performance, so you're going to be trying to play those a lot. Every arm in the game can be unlocked through a set minigame. This minigame has three timer intervals that actually change depending on how much of the coin you spend from the game's other modes. And this mode is more so skill based, because actually how you perform during that case and which character you bring can actually impact the arms that you receive. So even though you might be playing a Springman in the mode, you can unlock an arm for Master Mummy. However, most of the ones are going to be for your character of choice. And because the coin comes from the other modes, there's incentive to keep on playing in both of the camps so that actually you can try out the arms as you go, which gives a fair amount of content to play around with. But on top of this, the game also offered up in a later update one of its neatest features, the tournament mode. By pressing right on the thumbstick and L and R on the buttons, you're actually able to unlock a specific mode which allows you to have all the arms unlocked for every single character. And this mode is intended for local use in tournaments and casual play, which is shown in the fact that you can't play the single player or online modes to skew them because you can't get any of the rewards there. So how would this help Smash Bros? Well, for one, the system of having to travel a certain amount of distance that also factors into the characters that you unlock, being able to do that as a main would be pretty great to unlock in that own main. And hey, going back to that original example, let's say I head over to my friend's house and he has none of the characters unlocked. No problem, I hit the button combination that I learned from looking up online or maybe in a secret menu down in the bottom right, and now I'm able to lose to him as Palutena, as it should be. But hey, if he still wants to unlock that character afterwards, then no problem. After I leave, he can deselect the mode and he'll be good to go for unlocking his process just as you would. Or if you don't want to use it in the first place, don't worry, it's completely optional and it's up to you if you want to use it or not. Hey, maybe even make the button prompt cheat code easter egg. I don't know. Seems fitting for the franchise. So that's my small tweak that I would recommend for the challenger approaching system. Let me know yours down below, and hey, if you want to check out another video, click right here for what makes a good Smash Bros boss, click up here for another video. And if you want to support the channel and get new uploads every week, then click that subscribe button down below. But until then, take care, and you have a good one, alright?